Today I will be reacting to 1980s things we can no longer do. This is about America, so could be really, really interesting. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like, thank you so much, my friend. It's the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well, in that case, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description and uh, let's play it. By the way, what the hell? Okay, let's play it. Throughout my life, I have seen multiple generations debate on which time period was the best to live in. There's no doubt that what we experience firsthand has a bearing on those thoughts. Okay. But for me, the 1980s and before just seem different. There are numerous. I think the 90s are also really good, right? Things that we once did on a daily basis, but will never be done again. In this video, we will discuss some things that we did in the 80s, but can no longer do. Okay. Telephones are something that has definitely gone through a lot of changes over the last couple decades. That's a big difference. Most people now have cell phones, but if you are still using a landline, then chances are it is not a rotary phone. It's probably push button, and it may even be cordless. Do you remember yeah. having to untangle the phone cord? No matter how careful... No, I remember this. I mean, uh, yeah, I, rem I still remember this. Oh, you were? It was going to end up tangled at some point. These older phones also required us to dial a number from memory, unless we had a little address book or phone book. Today, <sighs> cell phones have pretty well replaced both of those. But that's not the only thing that cell phones have replaced. There was a time when we had to pay for long distance calls. Honestly, okay. Odd take. See, we tend to say that things in the past are being better, but this is an, an example where we are better now, you know, because phones, the cell phones are much better than that. Let's be real. And the fact that you can use Skype, Zoom, all of that stuff to, to even see people that you miss, let's be real. That's an improvement. Back in the day, it was quite more difficult. I know there will be a, there is a lot of bad things nowadays because of internet, specific even more because of social media, but there is also a lot of good things, uh, you know. Televisions are another item that has seen its share of changes over the years. Before we got things like oh, cable, I remember we all those had rabbit ears. And yes, maybe you still have some modern rabbit ears, but I doubt you have foil on them or some big antenna on top of the roof. Wait. This was coming. How oh, true is this? Do you got? Oh man! Okay, this I was not aware of this technology. But when was the last time that you had to connect an RF modulator between your VCR and television? I don't remember. If you were into vintage <laughs> items, then maybe you have, but really it's gone. Something else that we used to do with all the big boxy televisions was slap the sides or top to get better reception. <laughs> Remember I that? don't know why it worked, but it did. <laughs> it worked again. Yeah. I don't know why. Well, Today I'll, we yeah. see smoking areas outside of businesses, but in the early 80s and before, you could smoke anywhere. Any this was wild. Can we agree? My friends, please, can we agree? This was wild. I think it's another thing that I'm changing for the best. <laughs> Restaurant or grocery store was completely fine. Even commercial airplanes allowed it, and they had little ashtrays in the armrest. Back then, even the captain would smoke in the cockpit, what? and we were perfectly fine with it. We never <laughs> wanted him to get a headache or the shakes from not getting his nicotine fix 30,000 feet in the air. Oh, that's crazy. Something even as simple as milk has changed. If we had soy milk, almond milk, or whatever else milk, then it certainly was not where I was. But half-gallon milk came in cartons rather than jugs, and do you remember what was on the side of those cartons? They were the Have You Seen Me photos and information about people that were missing. What? Oh, that's crazy. Okay, so this type of package is still the ones we have in Europe, at least in my country. I guess I should not speak for the other countries. But uh, Jesus, I would be so depressed. Oh, man. Okay. Man, ooh, let's drink. Oh man, this kid is. No, nah. no, nah, poor kid. It's almost hard to believe now, but there were a lot of full service stations in addition to self service. Most of those full service gas stations have disappeared. 
but yeah this is also not happening yet <laughs> something else that has disappeared is the leaded gasoline that we used to buy Back then, fuel was a whole lot cheaper than what it is now, and you could fill up a muscle car for less than $10. That's great. One thing that we were all glad to see go was the 55 miles per hour national speed limit that we could see on highways and interstates. Oh, wow. It took forever to get anywhere at that speed. The 80s was a time period when kids looked forward to each and every Saturday morning so they could watch their cartoons. Oh. People looked in the TV guide to see what was on television and when to make sure that they could be home for it. Oh, this I have Not great memories. Not everyone had a VCR in the earlier part of the decade, so occasionally we would be so busy that we would forget to tune into our show and we would miss it. The majority of households still got the newspaper delivered every day of the week. There was Oh, the majority? Is this true? Oh, that's crazy. Uh, yeah, newspapers here, they, they sold much more than they sell nowadays, for sure. But was still something that, you know, I think this is a more cultural thing in America. Nothing better than going through the Sunday paper and looking at all the sales ads, comics, and coupons. <laughs> Back then, kids loved getting a side job as a paper boy or paper girl. Now all of that seems to be mostly gone. Interesting, actually. In the 80s, tons of kids dreamed of one day going up into space on the space shuttle. We all believed that that would one day be possible, and even more so when the first teacher was going up into space. But when the Challenger disaster happened, our opinions changed a little bit, and now the Oh, I don't know what what um, what is this. Uh, so th there was a disaster with, uh, with the rocket. Okay. The space shuttle is gone forever, so it sure won't happen. Parents in the 70s and early 80s had chicken pox parties with their children. Don't think of parties with birthday hats or That's fun wild. games. It wasn't exactly like that. Because you guys wanted to spread that way. Yeah, the kid already had it. Let, let's move on. Okay, kind of makes sense. I remember something similar, but never a party. You know what I mean? But <laughs> this is amazing. Usually, kids would just go to visit the kid that had it, and then parents would introduce you to it by touch. If you did not go, then your parents might, and then bring it home and have contact with you. Okay. That was still a chicken pox party. It's not exactly exciting, but it did get it out of the way when it was convenient rather than at Christmas or some other important event. Being bored as a kid in the early 80s or before was just part of everyday life. Mm. We went shopping with our parents at stores, and we didn't have cell phones to entertain us. Nobody's kids looked crazy in the stores doing the latest TikTok dances. We waited at dentist. Okay, uh, just talking for myself, I did a lot of bad stuff in the store when I went to my mother. I remember eating kind, kind there and not, tell, not telling my mother, but my mother found and, and had to pay. It was a mess. Yeah. And doctor's offices with our moms, and most of the time we were stuck listening to some sort of elevator music. If we were lucky, then maybe they had the Highlights magazine, but you could bet that some kid had already solved all the puzzles inside. Okay. In the 80s, we were all about being clean and smelling good. The old In the 90s, we are not about that. <laughs> school vacuums that were used had one of those bags that would fill up with air, gave off a whiff of old dust, and then got really warm when it was used. Dude, you guys, you, you know what I remember about every time I see this type of stuff, the, the vacuum cleaners, there was a lot of people going door by door trying to sell those here. What about in America? Do you guys also have people trying to push you the new technology? This will, you know, this your house will be zero bacteria, basically. <laughs> it was crazy. And a lot of people felt in, into that. I'm not saying those are bad items, but they end up being a bit overpriced, you know. To combat the dusty smell, we would sprinkle carpet fresh on the carpet so it would emit a pleasant smell through the vacuum. Occasionally, the vacuum bag would bust, and what a mess that was. Potpourri pots or warmers could be found in just about every home. They smelled good, but they sort of made a sticky, gummy mess in the pot. Mm. Incense was another way of getting your house to smell better than cigarette smoke. But one of the people still using incenses, uh, incense, right? 
Craziest things that ladies had in their homes were the decorative soaps in the bathrooms. <laughs> you know, the kinds that look like little flowers, shells, or balls in My a bowl? My mother still has that. <laughs> they came in all sorts of colors and scents, but they did have one important rule. Do not use them. They were for decoration only. I learned that the hard way, by the way. Some of the things that you could find in living rooms of the 80s could be pretty interesting. For starters, just about everyone had the old wooden console televisions that weighed as much as a naval destroyer. What? Never Metal saw those. TV yeah. trays were essential to have so that you could eat dinner and watch your favorite television show. Some households stored them under the couch or in a coat closet while others had an actual storage rack <laughs> in the living room. If it's great technology. <laughs> if you were really fancy, then you probably ordered the clapper off of a television commercial. Those became the source of many... See, now we are getting very American. A lot of that stuff is going completely over my head, I have to admit. Jokes, but secretly, we all wanted one. Another essential item that was found in many living rooms was... Wait, that was a Vox one? ...television commercial. Those became the source of many jokes, but secretly, we all wanted one. Huh. Another essential item that was found in many living rooms was anything made out of brass. What you may not have realized is that it took a lot of polishing to keep it looking good. Okay. Ceramic animals and figurines were also popular to have in living rooms. Yeah. These came painted, but many people purchased them in blank white and then tried their hand at painting it themselves. And once it was done, there was... Dude, this one... Okay, this is very 80s and 90s. I remember those also. Nowadays, people don't uh, buy this type of stuff. Uh, to be honest, this type of stuff would be crazy expensive with, with uh, you know, I feel like they went away because we cannot afford them anymore. There was no better place to show off your artwork than the living room. They are cool. I like it. The 80s had a lot of things that spoiled us and we didn't even realize it. Hostess ding-dongs came in foil and for some reason they just seemed to take... Ding-dongs? Okay. ...taste better. Showbiz Pizza had some fun for the whole family, and to a kid, there was no better currency than some of the gold coins or tickets to get some prizes. But the decade wasn't without its share of scams. Remember the erasable <laughs> pens? The only way it seemed like you could erase the ink is if you finally wore a hole in the paper. Thousands of women fell for the epilating. Sure, it got rid of your leg hair, but not without some real pain after it ripped out the hair and made it... What the hell is that? ...it ingrown. During cartoons, they would air commercials that lured kids into calling 1-800 numbers so they could speak with their favorite cartoon... Yeah, this happened to me. I remember, you know, calling those numbers and uh, all of a the sudden there is a crazy phone bill. Of, yeah, my mother and my dad, yeah, we had a conversation, let's put things that way characters. These commercials always had a warning saying to get your parents' permission, but virtually no kid ever, yeah, right. <laughs> ever did. That was always a nice surprise for the parents when they saw how much they yeah. were being charged for Damn, some really call that they did not even make. <laughs> Despite all of the scams in the decade, the 80s was a great one to experience. The positives far outweighed all of the negatives. I believe that. The 1980s had a lot of style, and most of it is long gone. However, it's interesting when we see some of it come back. The oh, bullets so cool. are certainly something that has, but ladies, where's that big hair? <sighs> what are some of the things that you loved about the 80s? Let us know in the comments below. As okay. Great video. I mean... Uh these type of videos, they give me a lot of nostalgia, which is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time, because uh, I think we have to live the moment, you know what I mean? But uh, um, I grew up in the 90s, not in the 80s, but uh, Portugal had a delay, so I feel like I experienced a lot of you guys, a lot of what you guys experienced 10 years <laughs> before. <laughs> but uh, that said, well, leave me a like if you like these type of videos, and see you guys next time. Bye.